everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. Another great presentation today. We're going to continue our lectures in endocrinology, right? We've been doing a series of lectures on endocrinology, another important topic today. Before we go into, let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Premier Chariath. I'm a practicing physician in the United States, program director of internal medicine residency and transitional residency, and I teach uh, medical students. I'm also an associate professor of medicine in two large medical schools in the United States, okay? So let's look at our um, topic today. So the topic is adrenal incidentaloma, okay? The word I want you to focus on, incidentaloma, right here. So what does that mean? It comes out like incidentally, right? Let's say what happens if you go into the hospital and you have some abdominal pain and uh, they found out you had uh, maybe diverticulitis. At the same time, the radiologist report, oh, we found this in adrenal mass, like one centimeter, two centimeter, or three centimeter, okay? That's what when we call about incidentaloma. Because the patient came in for something else, let's say sometimes they come in for pneumonia, and they end up doing a CT scan, and they might also find something in the abdomen, and then you can, I mean, you know, then you're stuck with another diagnosis, what, what are you going to do with it? That's the question, okay? So mainly, I mean, you, you need to know it's found on, when it, on the CT scan, okay? Now, it's important to know, I mean, that some of the numbers, very, very important, you know, I think, I don't remember who said it, I think it's Lord Calvin. If you cannot express in numbers, you don't know what is the situation and how large is the situation, how small is, how fast you need to act act on it, okay? So always trying to express the numbers, very, very true in this case. So let's look at the numbers, okay? I'm going to write it over here. First thing we need to know, I'm just going to put the facts, okay? So first of all, when you do a CT scan and imaging, okay, 95%, you found an adrenal uh, tumor, 95% of them are benign, and 5% could be cancerous, remember that. So, on imaging, you do an imaging. Ninety-five percent benign, okay? Then you got 5% could be cancer. That is, on this part, you do the imaging. The second is, you need to know it's a functioning or non-functioning. Okay, fun functioning means it's producing like hormones, okay? The second thing you, you need to know, is it functioning or non-functioning, okay? So if it is a functioning, uh, that's about 15%, and the non-functioning is around 85%, remember that. So the, when you find this tumor, and I always remember that 85% are like non-functioning tumors and 15% are functioning tumors, okay? When I talk about functioning means they can produce uh, the hormones into it. So when you look at the functioning, I'm going to underline this, around 12% is cortisol producing, okay? And then around 8% is pheochromocytoma. Okay, and then um, if you look at the other one, around 2% uh, will be aldosterone producing. Okay, remember that. That's very important to know uh, before we go anything. Okay, that numbers, expressing numbers, so you know how, so you know how large is the situation, why do we need to act on it, okay? Remember that. So what would you do? The first thing, you get the CT scan, you found this tumor, you got two things you have to do, right? Um, I mean, you know, the initial is tumor size, you have to look at it, you have to look at the attenuation on unenhanced CT, you can do initial imaging or enhanced CT, MRI, 18F, FDG, PET scan, and all of this could be done. First thing, remember, it's a functioning or non-functioning, we need to know that, okay? So once you get the CT, you do, when we talk about, what did we say? We said 12% are cortisol producing. So what's the best test to do? You do this overnight one milligram dexamethasone suppression test. If it come back less than 1.8, 
the cortisol level that pretty much is a benign. Okay, remember that. The next thing you do is we need to rule out what is this? I mean, it's around 8% could be pheochromocytoma. So, what's the best store? Initial test to do? You can do like serum, plasma, um, plasma metanephrines, okay? Or you can do 24 hour free urine metanephrines also. That's our option. Now, we said only 2% is what? 2% is all those serum secreting tumor, right? Very low. So you, we don't usually recommend it doing a, a test unless if the patient have hypertension and then if they have hypokalemia, and then you have to think maybe we need to roll out. What do we do for that? Everybody know you take all those to on red in ratios like greater than 20, right? Those are the things you have to do. Okay, now let's look at this side over here. You got this tumor size, you got the CT scan. First thing you have to do is like look at the unenhanced CT or non-contrast CT. That's give us like a lot of information, okay? You have to look at the size. If it is less than four centimeter, usually benign, you don't have to do anything. Um, and then if it is more than four centimeter, you have to worry something else kind of going on. The second thing is you look at the first we said you do an all contrast CT, okay? So most of this benign adenoma, they got a lot of lipid in it, in, in there. Okay, that's how do they measure the lipid? Radiologists, we might hear the term like house field unit. So if there is a lot of lipid, the house field unit is going to be very less. Remember that, okay? So if they did a, a non-contrast CT, and if it is less than 10 house field unit, and then usually it's kind of benign. If it is greater than 10, then you know there's like, most likely it could be cancer too, okay? But you need to worry about it. Next thing you have to do is like, uh, you give the contrast CT. And the contrast with adenoma, remember we got a lot of lipid. So what happens if you give the contrast, the contrast will you know, get rid of fast. But if it is a malignant tumor, the contrast stays in the system. So the washout is, time is going to be greater, okay? So usually like a CT contrast, the washout is like around 40 to 60%. Here, CT contrast wash out be less than 40% because the, you know most of them don't have much lipid, right? And the cancers. So they continue to take this um, contrast and keep it in the system. So wash out is going to be less. The other thing you can do, you can do signal loss on MRI with the chemical shift analysis. You can do 18F FDG PET CT with SCV max less than five, or adrenal spleen, or adrenal liver, signal intensifying ratio less than one. All this kind of good, that's kind of tell us it's good, you don't have to worry that much about it, right? No further follow-up is needed. Only, you know, you still have to look at this side to make sure it's not a hormone secreting tumor, right? Now, what characteristics is like for tumor or other things need to do? Less than, I mean, if the tumor is greater than four centimeter, then you have to worry, it's better to take it out, okay? The one thing you need to know, when the size is greater than four, you know, what's the first thing we always see when we see a mass? What we've been taught, always put a needle and get a biopsy, right? In this case, don't do it, because sensitivity is very poor. So you'd rather take the whole thing out, okay? Very, very important. So there's no role in biopsy. You don't see any biopsy over here. Very less, okay? Always remember that. Take it out. If it's a tumor of more than centimeter, you take it out. Next thing is we talk about the house field units greater than 10. Most likely it could be tumor too. CT contrast washout is less than 40. You have to worry about a tumor. And then you can you talk about MRI hyperintense on T2 imaging or no signal. Remember the word hyperintense. That's also characteristic of cancer. And then you look at this chemical shift analysis or 18F FDG PET CT, SCV max greater than five. And then you can look at that adrenal to spleen or adrenal to liver signal intensity greater than one also. Those are like red flags. You have to do something about it. So what would you do? Consider adrenalectomy. You can do laparoscopic adrenalectomy, okay? And then based on that, I think you can do the treatment um, based on that, that's very important.
Okay, everybody got that side right there. Now, let's look at on this side where, you know, we said what is uh, first thing, the other thing we have to look at is, is functional or non-functional, right? Which is, if it is functional, the first thing we should come to our mind, 12% of them be cortisol producing, okay? So in that case, everybody you know, one milligram dexamethasone suppression test, that was so you do. And then, your chromocytoma is what percent? 8%. What test you do? Plasma free metanephrines or 24 hour urine free metanephrines you can do, right? Both of them is okay. And then if there's hypokalemia and hypotension, you check plasma, aldosterone, renin, and look at the ratio, it's usually greater than 20. If it is all come back negative, you don't need to worry about it. It's usually like a benign kind of thing. But if it is positive, then you have to do this confirmatory test. You check your cortisol is going to be increased, ACTH is going to be decreased. Okay, that's what, yeah, I mean, you know, if it is hyperaldosterone, so we can, and, I mean, you know, we already talked about checking the renin and aldosterone. Now, if there is pheochromocytoma, you have to do adrenalectomy, okay? First, but before adrenalectomy, make sure you do this alpha blockade. Some people have to do beta blockade also. And if it is autonomous cortisol hypersecreting or primary hyperaldosterone, you can also consider adrenalectomy. Remember, if you chromocytoma, you just kind of make sure you take it out. There was, a, I mean, I was, I still remember is, uh, you know, Eisenhower, the U.S. president. Um, it was, he was, I mean, he had like six or seven heart attack in his life, and he used to have a headache and hypertension. But at that time, they didn't know what was going on. Apparently, he had pheochromocytoma. How did they find out? After he died, they did bio, I mean, they did autopsy, and then then they found out he had like a pheochromocytoma and all that. So it's very important when somebody have. Um, you know, an incidental adrenal adenoma. Let's do the whole workup. So I'm going to stay, take a step back and let's look at our whole picture right here. Hope everybody can see this whiteboard. You know, I always say like, why? I mean, you know, why are we using whiteboard? Because where else you can see the whole picture on a board? You can just take a look at it and see what's going on, right? Otherwise, when we make a presentation, in a, it's easy to make presentation in the PowerPoint and then kind of talk about it, right? But you, who wants to go through one slide after the other slide? That's what we do. And make sure you watch all our videos, okay? So let's look at the facts right here. 95% benign, 5% malignancy, right? And then you look at, is it functional or non-functional? 85% is uh, non-functional, 15% functional. And then we have this number out of this 15, 12% is cortisol uh, producing 8% of your chromocytoma, around 25%, I mean 2.5 to 2 or 2.5% is aldosterone. It's like very less, okay? And then you look at uh, the test, usually is an adrenal incident loma. You get a CT scan and they find it, and they'll tell you what's going on. So you got two parts. Both of them should be done at the simultaneously, right? You look at the CT characteristic, look at the size, the number again, four centimeter or greater. You have to worry about the cancer. If it is greater than 10 house field on the non contrast CT, don't forget it. Okay, and then you can consider, you should consider malignancy. And then you also look at the washout, you know, the adenoma washout fast, cancer doesn't go, I mean, it can stay in the, in the tumor, so washout is going to be less, and then you can do some additional MRI, you can do hyperintense is the word you look on T2 imaging, okay? And then you can do this chemical shift analysis, 18 FFDG PET CTs, uh, SUV max greater than 5, adrenal to spleen or adrenal to liver signal intensity greater than 1. All these are characteristics of malignancy. And then I'm going to say it again. Is there a role for biopsy? No, no, no. Okay? You don't pick an answer. If you have a test and say, like, let me do the biopsy like other thing, please. No way you shouldn't do a biopsy. Okay? Because why is that? Sensitivity is very, very bad. And then you try to take it out, okay? And on this side, we talk about, you know, functional. 15% could be functional. That's why you do all this. You want to roll out. Cortisol secreting. You know what test? Pheochromocytoma. Remember, what test you have to do? And if there's hypertension, and then if you have hypokalemia, you think about what? Aldosterone. Okay, and then you have to do this confirmation testing. There's going to be, of course, there's going to be increased cortisol, decreased ACTH, and then consider adrenalectomy. 
uh, make sure you do the alpha blockade and beta blockade, okay? Thank you so much for watching. Very, very important topic. And just remember you the numbers, when to investigate, and what are the characteristics of malignancy, what characteristic of pheochromocytoma, so you don't want to miss it, okay? Thank you so much for watching. Please study hard. We'll be back with another presentation. If you could help us, send the subscribe button, because it takes a lot of effort and time like three, four people to make videos like that. And we want to finish our endocrinology series. We still have a lot of work to do, but thank you so much for your support, my friends.